So Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And for those of you that are watching on live stream, uh, it's been on my heart to try to get it to where you guys can see what's going on at the same time everyone else does. And I finally have figured out how to resolve that very issue here. So it was all a matter in contrast. Uh, we already had the screen that we could use here, but we just never have been able to put it up. We got it mounted in today. And now you guys can actually watch live what's going on. So in live motion, we're like a real new studio. We're actually live and able to see everything in real time. Um, we're going to kind of take and recap Israel, what's going on in Israel, and also the incitement of violence. And uh, today I was able to capture the uh, memory uh, TV, uh, actually say capture, it's actually we have it right here on uh, the internet here, they've made public here, Memory TV has put out a video. This is a Palestinian Muslim inside the Gaza uh, Strip there, inciting violence against the Jewish people, inciting the Intifada, a, 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 a holy war, a jihad, everything you want to talk about. I'm going to share this with you. Now, I don't know how well you guys can see the subtitles on the screen behind me, but I will read it as we go. And uh, I will also try to make sure the volume's not too high there so we don't, we don't have uh, a super loud with him, but I'd like for you to be able to hear him as he's ranting and raving in the background there. But he's, he's going to take a knife and show how to kill the Jews. <laughs> the media's gone mad, that's all I can tell you. Let's take a look at this here. It starts off with, this is Gaza. This is the place of trenches is what he starts off by saying. Of course, Memory TV, Palestine cleric Muhammad Salah Abu Rajat, Rayad says, Brothers, we must constantly remind the world and everyone who has forgotten. The world must hear via these cameras and via the internet. This is Gaza. This is the place of trenches and guns. This is the West Bank. This is the place of bombs and daggers. This is Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the code word. This is Jerusalem. Much can be told about Jerusalem. This is where the soldiers of the Prophet Muhammad are. That's a joke. This is the grace of Allah. The soldiers of the Prophet Muhammad are here. Brothers, this is why we recall today what Allah did to the Jews. We recall what he did to them in uh, Kabar. Today we realize why the Jews build walls. They do not do this to stop missiles, but to prevent the slitting of their throats. My brother in the West Bank, Stab. Look at him with his knife now. My brother in the West Bank, Stab. The myths of Talmud and their minds. The Talmud. <laughs> My brother in the West Bank stabbed the myths about the temple in their hearts. Today we have declared a curfew in Israel. He just continues to repeat the same thing. Listen to what the Jews are saying to one another. Stay at home or go outside to your death. They have no alternative. O oh, men of the West Bank, the first phase of the operation requires stabbing in order to bring about a curfew. He keeps waving that knife around. Now we are imposing a curfew with daggers. And in the next phase, which is Allah willing, about to be realized. We shall not send you back to Russia, Bulgaria, the Ukraine, or Poland. We shall not send you back there. You have come here. The Islamic military court has ruled. This court presided over by the prophet's companion Sa'ad ibn Muhad has ruled, false prophet. Sa'ad ibn Madah has re reappeared in the West Bank. Sa'ad ibn Madah is now in the streets of Jerusalem, Afula, Tel Aviv, and the Nagiv. 
And he keeps waving his knife around in the screen there. Sarabinima is now, the, okay, you already said that. This Islamic military court has made the divine ruling. It's not definitely not divine. You will get nothing on our land except for slaughtering or stabbing. And he takes his knife and shows them how to cut their throats. Why the world will say that we are terrorists, that we incite, yes. And he's right, yes, they do incite the violence. O oh, Prophet, sufficient for you and for whoever follows uh, you, uh, uh, the believers, is Allah, a false god. O oh, Prophet of Allah, incite the believers to fight. It, you know, it's calling on the devil is what it is. Why, O oh, America, O oh, crusader aggressors? O oh, Arab Zionists, O oh, Zionists from among the criminal Jews, are we aggressors? You have come of your own vi uh, volition. When the promise of the hereafter comes, we shall gather you from various nations. That's absurd. Allah has brought the Jews, his enemies, and the enemies of humanity. Enemies of humanity, that's absurd. Who have destroyed our homes in Syria, Iraq, Egypt, and everywhere. Jews didn't do that. O people of Al-Bara, Al mosque of the people of Rafa. From this mosque of yours, you have the honor of delivering these messages, false messages, to the men of the West Bank. Form stabbing squads. We don't want just a single stabber. Oh, young men of the West Bank, attack in threes and fours. Some should restrain the victim while others do the stabbing. Do not fear what will be said about you. Oh, men of the West Bank, next time attack in groups of three, four, or five. Attack them in groups. Cut them into body parts. I mean, do you, do you understand the absurdity? Absolutely absurdity in what you just heard here. I, I, I cannot even for a moment understand the evil of a human being. You know, if, if there's ever people who need a Christ, it's definitely these people. There, there's no doubt about it. But what, what really gets me, now this is the type of people that the Catholic Church backs. You know, if you remember when we had Avi Lipkin on in the interview here, uh, here well actually in, the, in our apartment in Jerusalem there, Avi actually stated that the Catholic Church would not back his political Jewish, uh, Judeo-Christian party because they knew that he was against the Muslims. And they said, we will not back anything that is against the Muslims. So, if the, if the Vatican is actually telling Avi Lipkin they will not back him if, they're, if he's not with the Muslims, and they won't back anyone that is not with the Muslims, then the Vatican is showing their support, their backing for this. What you're seeing right here on your screen, this is what the Vatican backs. The Vatican is backing murder and mayhem of the Jewish people. They're doing it everywhere. When they try to annex Bethlehem into Israel for the protection of the, of the Christian people there, the Vatican refused to allow Bethlehem to be annexed as part of Israel. And more than 80% or 90%, and I believe it is, of the Christian population is completely gone out of Bethlehem today as a result. Because why? The Vatican sides with the Muslims. Well, the question is, and, and this is not, I don't, I don't put this on the Catholic people. I have many Catholic people that watch these videos. Many of them have written me and, and have made the stand for Israel, and many of them have come out of this demonic system. Because the headship of this system, the Roman Catholic Pope, and, and I don't care. I have people writing me and telling me, sending me some articles that the Pope may resign next year. What about the Antichrist then? You don't understand. The Bible says there are many Antichrists. Satan never changes. All he does is changes man. If this one dies, he takes another one's place. Or another one takes the place and the same devil is in him. It does not make any difference. The point is about Pope Francis is that it clearly he is fulfilling the biblical prophecy of everything that is written about the Antichrist. And the one thing that has made me think that maybe, and it's only a maybe, that there could be possibly one more pope yet to come, 
And I know there's a lot of people already saying, no, he's the last pope. It's all going to end. The books have been written about it. And I don't say it very often, but I have said it before, and especially when I wrote, read about the Apocalypse of Thomas, a, a, a book that is not part of the canon. It was found much later. But in the Apocalypse of Thomas, it writes about, Thomas writes about there being a king that rises up from the south that bankrupts the world economy with his Roman soldiers. Now, I've always said that's either Barack Obama because he comes from Kenya or it's Pope Francis who comes from Argentina, the south. He bankrupts the world economy with his Roman soldiers. Because why? The Vatican wages wars all over the world using the militaries like NATO and now using Russia. So they bankrupt the world's economies because they can't, how, how do you keep affording to spend all this money? And the Bible even says that he would do what? According to the apocalypse of Thomas, he would take, he would, he would be for redistribution of the money and take it from the elderly and give it to the poor. Pope Francis is calling on this. But notice though, the apocalypse of Thomas says that he doesn't call this man the Antichrist. He calls him the king that rises up from the south. And he says, and then Thomas writes, the Antichrist will follow him. So I have wondered, could there yet be one more pope as a result of that particular writing? I'm not sure. I don't know what to think about that as of yet, unless Satan himself incarnates into the same individual. Don't know. Nonetheless, Pope Francis is fulfilling everything as an Antichrist. He's doing the miracles now, as, as Brother Kellen pointed out uh, last night in the broadcast here on uh, Israeli News Live. And, but the point is, though, the Vatican backs this type of violence. They back this type of incitement. And don't, don't say they don't. The whole world, I mean, yeah, John Kerry gets a little bit brave today and says, well, you know, the, Israel has a right to defend itself. I mean, nonsense. You know, the, the hypocrisy of the American or the Obama administration is, be, any, is beyond me, completely beyond me. I, I don't even understand it. Because they say that, well, the reason why you have the problems you're having in Israel is because you're not letting the Palestinians have their land. You know, let me tell you something. The United Nations, and now Russia and Syria, the Intifada, the Intifada is only to draw all the soldiers away from the borders of Israel, to be totally bogged down in the internal battle in Israel. And then once they weaken the borders, then Hezbollah, Hamas, Hezbollah. It, it is funny, I say Hamas, Hamas is not struck yet. They, a couple of little rockets have been flying in here and there, but Hamas has not done an all-out assault on Israel. Why? They're letting the quagmire, letting all this get bogged down, bringing in the soldiers into Jerusalem, into different cities, dealing with all the violence there. Then when the time is to go, Hamas will be the first one to start lobbing rockets into Israel. It'll catch Israel. Israel will have to start dealing with that. Again, Israel will have to bring more forces there. Forces will be in Jerusalem. Forces are in Tel Aviv. Forces are in Afula. Everywhere they're doing attacks, attacking, killing, stabbing, bringing terror to the Jewish people. That's when Hezbollah will step in, invade. Russia will make sure that the United States doesn't do anything about it. It's kind of interesting because, you know, John Kerry, let me, let me just kind of bring this up for you here. John Kerry, in a statement... Um, I can find the one where he's talking. Here we go, right here. Israel has a right to defend itself. This is what John Kerry says. Now, the, the ironic thing about John Kerry stating that they have the right to defend themselves only makes me wonder, is something about to take place that they know about that Israel's going to have to defend itself? But will the United States do anything to help Israel when it comes? Or does Russia have the United States in, in checkpoint? That's a very good question. The article here says on Israel National News, Israel has the right to defend itself, Kerry tells uh, Netanyahu. Uh, Secretary of State John Kerry on Friday evening uh, telephoned Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu re re reiterated his remarks in an interview on NPR, National Public Radio, in the United States in which he said that Israelis have the right to defend themselves against violence in Jerusalem's old city and everywhere. Everywhere. Mr. Kerry, do you know something that you're not telling the rest of the world? 
Kerry also told Netanyahu that the Palestinians must end the incitement and that the Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas must condemn the violence in a loud and clear voice as he had said in that same interview. Mahmoud Abbas is just inciting it. It's just the opposite way around. He's sitting there accusing Israel of killing someone, killing a little boy, a 13-year-old little boy that was laid up in a hospital of being treated for his, for his wounds after he had already critically wounded two people. It is completely senseless, to say the least. Now, one thing that I want to say to the Jewish people that may listen to this news broadcast here, please keep in mind, the Muslim world is trying to bring terror into the Jewish people. And at one time, the world was afraid of Israel. I'm not talking about modern-day Israel, but I'm talking about biblical Israel. The world at one time was very fearful of Israel. What could happen? Because Israel was a force to be reckoned with. This is something that Israel must return to once again. And the only way that Israel will become a force to be reckoned with is when Israel comes to the place where they really begin to pray and seek God. With all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all your soul. This is the way Israel has always been great in the past. It wasn't that we were some great army, some bigger army, or some better uh, person than somebody else. The thing was that with, with Israel is that Israel was great because Israel believed in the God of Israel and, and would fight with faith, believing. You see, this is what Israel did originally. And this is exactly the way it needs to come back again. Let me share one other news broadcast here with you here. This was kind of interesting. In fact, I can actually pull it up on a larger video because I have this video as well. This here, um, this happened today. Give me one second here so you can see this. It's, the, the quality of the image is not that great there on this here, but let me explain to you what was happening here. This, uh, uh, I, I forget if this was in Hebron or exactly where it was, but it was somewhere in the West Bank in one of the settlement areas there. And a, a, is a, 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 an Arab terrorist, a Palestinian terrorist, attacked the Israeli soldiers with a knife, but he approached them as addressed as if he were a journalist. And of course, journalists are here filming. Now keep this in mind as you watch this video. He comes up as if he's a journalist, and you're going to see the, the journalist as well in the film part here, you know, to see what the man looked like when he came up to the Arab soldiers, but then he attacked them with a knife. They did shoot him dead. But then they begin to realize they're being filmed by Arab journalists and wondering if these journalists are not the same as this man right here. It's a, it's a whole new different way, and they probably got the idea from the man that, uh, that ran over the people at the bus stop that worked for Bezik, uh, Bizik as the internet company there. Maybe that's where they come up with the idea because here he is in a company vehicle and runs over the people, jumps out and stabs everybody. Nobody would think that a, a company like Bizik, Bizik is the largest internet company provider in all of Israel, that you would think that the employee would jump up, run people down with his car, and then jump out and start killing all the, the, the people at the bus stop. So they're getting smarter in their ways of attack to disguise themselves to be able to get closer to the people. And this is where Israel's got to be really, really vigilant because the next thing you know, they're going to be dressing as if they're Jewish people. And that's going to cause mayhem in Israel. Let's take a look at this video footage right here. And uh, it's a little bit shaky here in the beginning here at, this, at the first here. They've already shot the man down. They're running now to get away. They're trying to get a little bit away from the what's going on. They're going to zoom back in. Uh, they at the time you can't really see it very well, but they actually one of the their soldiers are down on the ground as well. They're treating him from his wounds. Uh, the man laying on the ground right there at the bottom of the screen there, he is the man that was dressed as a uh, as a um, journalist. It, he's got a black vest on, and what it is is. Um, it looks like, a, I don't know if it's a bulletproof vest or not, but this is what the journalists are wearing as well. You'll see that in just a minute, dressed just like a journalist. I don't know if he had press on or not, but you'll actually get to see that. And then the soldiers realizing that this man attacked them, the question is going to be now, who are these journalists that are here? So they come to these journalists uh, to see who they are because they're concerned as it is.
You can see the black they're wearing. Okay, see how they have the, the jackets on with press on it? And this is what the man actually did. He posed as if he were the, a journalist, approached the military there, and then began to stab one of the Israeli soldiers as well. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. This is just a quick update here for you uh, of things that are going on. Uh, tomorrow uh, morning, we will also be doing a broadcast. I uh, won't be running it live, though, but we'll be uploading it on YouTube there, uh, a broadcast about the events that are transpiring uh, uh, around the world as well, but also we'll be looking into some more of uh, very interesting biblical accounts of things that are going on in the last day, prophecy, things of that nature there. So tune in. It'll be on the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, right on Stephen Ben Danoon YouTube. And for those that will be watching on uh, live stream, we will be running live stream on a regular basis uh, starting Sunday. So I hope you'll start staying, stay tuning uh, to the broadcast there. We will actually set the time to be a little bit earlier in the day. Uh, for some of you guys there, we're probably going to move it up to... Uh, about 8 o'clock uh, p.m. Israeli time, which is about seven hours difference on the East Coast there. So once I get that time set in, we'll load them in to where you can see the different news broadcasts that will be appearing this week. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. God bless you and good evening. Let us know if you would. Uh, send us an email at stephenbenoon at aol.com or you can go to israelinewslive.org. Email us there and let us know if this type setup here is working for you on live stream. Shalom and good evening.